Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my very first stream with uh, my Melodica, uh, called Melodica Magic. What this stream is going to be all about is I have been a ukulele player, um, harmonic player, multi-instrument player for a very, very long time. I've never taken lessons or anything. I've just always kind of figured things out. I don't read sheet music. I kind of can read chord charts, but basically I just kind of hear it, I figure it out, and then I play it. But that's very challenging. It's it's not easy to do. It often takes a lot of time to kind of figure things out. Um, oftentimes I just kind of give up. However, I've discovered, uh, well, not recently, I bought this guy. Now, it's going to seem pretty, uh, it's green colored, and there is a green screen behind me, so you're not going to be able to see this very easily. So let me just kind of show you. This is a melodica, okay? And what a melodica is, is this. Let's look at this dude here, right? It's a little plastic piano um, that's kind of a, a hybrid between a piano and a harmonica if a piano and a harmonica had a baby this would be it because it is a reed instrument you do blow on it like you do a harmonica though you don't suck and as you press the keys that makes the individual noises like i said i'm using a green screen right now so um my melodica is actually see-through at the moment which is kind of cool um but yeah it's basically a, i bought this in china many 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 years ago this was manufactured in 2005 so i've uh, i've had it for at least 10 years probably more i probably bought it for 10 or 15 dollars they are quite inexpensive you can pick them up on uh on amazon for like like this picture shows here for like 14 15 dollars up to 30 60 100 up to 3000 obviously this guy right here is a huge inspiration if you don't know who this is this is john batiste uh, he is the band leader on Late Night with Stephen Colbert. He's also a multi-instrumentalist, and uh, he rocks the melodica. And I took inspiration from him because most people play a melodica either with a mouthpiece, like you see on this guy here or here, or with the plastic tube. The, the bonus of the plastic tube is it allows you to have it in front of you and you can play it like a piano. Uh, whereas with the mouthpiece, you play it more like a saxophone or a clarinet. However, uh, John Batiste, he plays without anything, just right off the end of the um, instrument itself, this little nub. And so I started giving that a try. And lo and behold, I love it. I, it it's more expressive to me. It's more personal to me than blowing through that kind of cheap, feeling plastic tube or the mouthpiece. Um, I'm not trying to make this into a saxophone. I don't necessarily need it to look like saxophone. Having it here, just seems so much better to me. Now, I bought this, like I said, over 10 years ago. I've played it three times, four times since then, uh, other than just very recently. It's been sitting in its case in its box in my collection of funky musical instruments that never get touched. Not sure why I dug it out. Um, I haven't made a lot of videos, music videos recently. I've been kind of, obviously like many of us have with the global climate, we've gone through some, some kind of bad stuff. And so I wasn't really making a lot of music videos. However, I discovered that the melodica, not only is it cool, not only is it inexpensive, it could very easily be the easiest instrument to play on the planet. Okay, let me tell you why. Um, let me give you an example anyway. Like I said, I've barely played this for a very, very long time. How, and you know, playing it by itself, Is okay but it doesn't have the same I don't know the same kind of fun oomph as if you're playing along with people so how do you play along with people especially during the covids and stuff um, when people weren't allowed to get together how do you how do you play music with people if you don't have people well that's where we go to mr. YouTubes 
<laughs> loves Mr. YouTubes. Now, this is literally what I've been doing lately, and I've been having fantastic success, and it's crazy, but it has actually been working. I go to the search, and I type in easy backing tracks, right? That's it, just easy backing track and see what comes up. So we've got easy groove backing track, A minor, simple groove. I've never played any of these before. I'm not familiar with any of these. Some of them come with the chord patterns, the the um, tempo, stuff like that. I know nothing about this stuff. Like this thing here, Fly Me to the Moon with the, all the chords listed here, the changes, means nothing to me. Um, I don't pay attention to that. I listen to it and within a couple minutes I try playing along and typically it works. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why. Uh, let me give you an example here. Let's just pick um, the, the E minor ones seem to be easier uh, just simply because they they tend to um, you don't need to modify with the black keys as much. I guess that means that you're in a different key or you're using a different scale. Um, a lot of these things in the backing tracks talk about the scale, you know, but um, now you see some of these have a red bar on them. That means I've already played them. So let's actually look at one. Here we go. An emotional backing track in E minor that I haven't played yet. Uh, it, it comes with instructions with his um, E Aeolian, uh, uh, the um, scales, the scales. So it's the E um, Aeolian scale and the E minor pentatonic scale. Whatever. That's all Greek to me. But let's click it anyway. Okay. So now, what typically happens is I let it play for 30 seconds a minute to kind of get the rhythm and then I'll start playing along. Let's just see what happens here.
All right, there we go. That was actually a really nice track. Um, this dude is Chuss Music. See you. Let me see. I think you can see that. Hey, now come back here. Uh, Chuss Music over here uh, on YouTube. He's got 110,000 subscribers. I hope it's okay for me to play his music on Twitch as a backing track. But I mean, if you're making backing tracks, isn't that what you're making them for? Is for people to be playing them anyway? Thank you for subscribing.